To set up the counter timer tack for tachometer mode, just hold down the mode button for three seconds and wait for it to flip over to the configuration mode. We're currently sitting at the function menu, which you can see right here. We can select one of four functions. We're currently in timer mode, so let's go ahead and move that down to counter, tack. Note that we can also select a mixed mode if we want. Let's go back to attack mode and lock that in by pressing the mode key. Once we've done that, the indicator tells us that we are now in tachometer mode and the output's got turned on. We're going to press the mode key to move to the next parameter. You can select one of four output modes. We want the two high, one low mode, which is this one right here. So let's go ahead and switch that. We'll press the arrow keys to cycle through the parameters until we get to two high, one low. Press the mode key to lock it in, and then press the mode key again to move to the next parameter. This is how fast the TAC is going to sample the input to make decisions. You can have a 10K cycle per second rate all the way down to a one cycle per second. Why don't we use a 1K rate for this example? So we'll move that down to 1K and lock it in by pressing the mode key. Press the mode key again, and now we get to move down to the point menu. This is the decimal point location. That's how many significant digits after the decimal you want to show. Be careful with this one. If you change the decimal point location, it will move the decimal point location on your set points, but it won't move the numbers. Suppose, for example, you had 15 seconds as your set value, but then you'd move the decimal point over. Well, the 15 will stay where it was, the decimal point will move, so you're going to end up with 0 .015 instead of 15. So set this before setting your set values. Let's move on to the next parameter by pressing the mode key. This is our scaling parameter. This modifies the present value display so you can convert the displayed value into whatever unit you want. For example, you can multiply this by 1 over 60 to convert the display from pulses per second to pulses per minute. Let's move down to the next parameter, which is the delay time. This tells the tack not to start until after the amount of time you specify here, anywhere from 0.1 to 999 seconds. So specify the delay after power on before you want the tachometer to start operating. We'll leave that at zero for this example. Press the mode button to move on down to the averaging parameter. This is great for making the present value more stable. You can average over one, two, four, or eight samples. Press the mode key to move on to the next parameter, and this is the minimum width of the reset pulse. You can choose between the one and the 20 milliseconds. Choose the wider pulse if you're concerned about noise getting onto the line or debouncing switch glitches. And finally, press the mode key one more time, and you can select what kind of input you're connected to, MPN or PNP. It's important to set this right, otherwise you may get some unexpected results. Once you're done, hold down the mode key for three seconds, wait for it to flip back into operation mode, and you are ready to go. You just set your set point here. Let's say we want a set point of about 10. Lock that in, and then you can set your second set point, that was set point one, by pressing the mode key. Now we're looking at set point two. Adjust that value. We'll make him something bigger than 10, like maybe 20. Lock that in, and the tachometer is now ready to go. Well, that's all there is to setting up the tachometer. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series to get the most out of your counter timer tack module. And as always, please send us any topics you would like to see covered or any other comments for that matter, we appreciate the feedback.